A living wall is a marriage between technology and horticulture. It's a way of growing plants that are adapted to an epiphytic lifestyle on a vertical surface. It's quite a visual impact when you're walking into the space. We're in an off-site facility that we are using to pre-grow all of the living wall panels that will be installed in the Spheres installation. This is generally the size of the plant material that we're starting with, and it's as easy as stretching the material out and situating the plant there. We do have a really pretty impressive diversity, around 200 different species of plants, and we used about 25,000 individual plants to start. 
for the living wall. It's a way of really kind of packing in the biodiversity and just the overall photosynthesis that's happening in the space. I mean, it's, it's fantastic. Hey everybody, Kurt Slosser from GeekWire. We're here at the Spheres in downtown Seattle. It's Amazon's years-long realization of an urban oasis of sorts, where they've placed over 40,000 plants inside these unique glass structures. It's a place for employees to take their laptop, hold a meeting, get a coffee, get away from their desks, and just think differently. The first thing that strikes you when you walk into the Spheres is the four-story living wall with plants that were cultivated in a greenhouse outside of Seattle, woven into a fabric mesh that has been hung in the spheres creates a dynamic green backdrop for the entire structure. At 60% humidity, it feels really warm inside the spheres if you're just come in off the cold Seattle street. At night, that humidity jumps to 80%. There's misting, there's water features that you can hear, and you're gonna wanna remove your coat as you walk around. It does smell like a walk in nature, which is the intent. You're not supposed to feel like you're at your desk or your cubicle. You're definitely in a green space and it feels like a walk in the woods. Because the spheres are intended as a working space for employees, there are meeting spaces throughout. There are small tables along the perimeter and throughout on little paths. There are benches. There's a large conference table where up to 15 or so people could probably gather for a meeting. You can also get, grab a coffee or a small bite to eat. Uh, there's a picnic lunch option that you can grab on the way in. To go from the bottom of the spheres all the way to the top, it's a transition from the base of a waterfall to the top of a tree. And at that very top, there's a meeting space called the bird's nest, which is a wooden structure that's at the end of a suspension bridge, if you will. And that nest puts you at the top of Ruby, the 55 foot tall tree that was a statement piece for this project. It was trucked up from California and dropped through the center of one of the spheres. Throughout the spheres, the intent is for the experience to be educational. And indeed, as you walk around, there'll be signs marking different plants and species. There are rare plants and, and definitely hard to find plants. Uh, there's, a, there's an extinct rhododendron that has been replanted in the spheres. There are these pitcher plants that collect water to uh, capture insects. And speaking of insects, they will be introduced to the spheres and they're good insects that are meant to combat bad insects, such as aphids, because they obviously can't spray pesticides inside the spheres to, to combat that sort of thing. There are definitely places inside that will catch your attention for a variety of reasons. And one of those is the suspension bridge, which springs and gives under your foot as you walk across it. So there you have it. It's quite a journey from the Bellevue garage where Jeff Bezos launched this company more than 20 years ago. And now we've got one of the more unique urban corporate campuses probably in the world. And the 40,000 employees who work for Amazon in Seattle have this as a perk. <laughs>